Hi and welcome back to the channel. We come to Saudi Arabia for the second time in Formula 1 and if last weekend's race has anything to go by, we should be in for another cracker. If you've missed anything from the Bahrain Grand Prix weekend, I've done a race review of that weekend and I've linked that in the description below. F1 came to Saudi at the back end of last season for the first time, but for this year it's round 2 for the 2022 season. The track was built in 2021 specifically for F1 and it was literally just built in time for the first race back in December. They started work back in April 2021 so you can imagine the tight deadline they had to build it in time for December. Their temporary street track is located on the Corniche, a 30 km coastal resort area which is of course located in Jeddah. The track is very fast with average speed around 250 km per hour. These speeds are quicker than Silverstone and only second to Monza in the 2021 calendar. But put simply, it's the fastest street circuit ever in F1. The track also features the most corners on a circuit with it having 27 corners. Many of them are quick and blind bends as drivers navigate their way through the circuit, which is of course alongside the Jeddah waterfront. The track, in my opinion, isn't good enough for racing or F1, but money talks in the sport and that's why we're here. F1 races on such a dangerous track and is not suited for F1 racing. The Formula 2 and the Formula 1 all had big crashes and accidents here back in 2021. It was constant start stop during the races and this isn't racing for me and in my personal opinion the track should never be on the calendar. But F1 has a long term deal with Saudi to keep racing here and as I mentioned before money talks. But let's see how this weekend turns out and if they can put on a spectacle that is Formula 1. The race is 50 laps on Sunday of the 6.1 kilometer track. This is the schedule for the weekend ahead. Last year's race as mentioned was full of red flags and incidents. This is due to the narrow circuit of the Jeddah track, but it was Lewis Hamilton who won the first race of 2021. And of course we all know what happened during last year's race. When the championship leaders came together, Lewis and Max, as Max tried to let Lewis pass, but of course Lewis wasn't told at the time and then went into the back of him. This was of course after Max drove off the circuit and gained an advantage and had to give the place back. Then of course we had the countless crashes and the restarts. So yeah, 2021 was a really crazy race. I've done a full race review previously, so if you've not seen that already, I've linked it in the description as well. Saudi have been in the spotlight recently due to ongoing issues in that country. Stefano Domenicolo, the CEO of F1, was asked recently if we're okay to still race there. He was asked about the human rights issue in Saudi that's going on after 81 men were executed on the 12th of March. This was the largest mass execution in recent times and this is after promises from Saudi that they will curtail the death penalty as well. His answer was the fact that we should be racing there to raise awareness. In my personal opinion, I don't really believe him and what he says as they as a sport aren't doing anything to help this situation. Also the fact that F1 have now removed the We Racers 1 gesture for 2022. So what are they really doing to help? And of course, if they are doing stuff to help, why isn't the fans or the drivers being told? For me, I think it's personally about money as usual. As well as this, F1 plans to still race there after missile attacks in Jeddah. Their city had been recently targeted by the Houthi group, who are Yemen's Iran aligned. Their attacks took place on early Sunday and didn't cause any casualties luckily, but it damaged civilian homes and cars in the area. They had targeted the oil refinery at the time where the conflict between Ukraine and Russia has increased oil prices. This has caused extreme volatility on Brent oil, which fluctuated between $139 to $159. So yeah, this is why they were under attack in Jeddah. So it's very concerning that F1 still heads there ahead of this second round. In other news, the report from the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix have finally been released. This finally came out between FP3 and qualifying on Saturday last race weekend out. This report was nothing but another admission by the FIA that rules were not followed and that Michael Massey was to blame. I don't personally like how they keep wording these issues and problems but the firing of Michael Massey was the first indication and then of course this full report that's now been released was the next. They stated that human error was the reason why only five lap cars were able to overtake as well as a safety car coming in the same lap and that Michael Massey acted in good faith trying to get the race finished under green flag conditions. They confirmed as everyone knew they would that the result now stands and the result cannot be changed. At least now everyone can put to bed in some way the 2021 saga. Massey was to blame wholeheartedly as the FIA has now stated as he bent rules to make Max win. 
he was fired and then blamed subsequently by the FIA for this failing, even though they didn't say it in those words. This forever means that Max Verstappen's championship will always have an asterisk next to it. The controversy, the firing, and obviously this report has all led towards this conclusion. And the blaming and firing of Michael Massey is nothing short of admission that Max Verstappen's championship will forever be tainted to the world. As you can imagine, fans took to Twitter after this report got released and stated that Max Verstappen was the human error champion. For me personally, I find it very funny to see and really creative if you ask me. But for me personally, a lot of fans and even Max Verstappen fans, there is category no denying that Max Verstappen didn't win that championship. It was given to him by Michael Massey's human error as confirmed by the FIA and the governing body. Lewis then came out and admitted that he wasn't expecting an apology from the FIA from the report, which I believe he should have received as a bare minimum as he got categorically robbed for his eighth world title. But he did state that the admission by Michael Massey and the firing and obviously the human error element is good enough and a good step forward. For me personally, he was so calm during the whole situation and the whole incident. He was so gracious in defeat and even congratulated Max and his team. But of course, he didn't say a word after that race and obviously was radio silence on social media and his team followed suit as well. But of course, with right reasons too. But to not even get an apology by the FIA for this failing is really uh, absurd. And for me, it isn't right in the sport. I feel like this is the least that FIA can do, whether that's publicly or privately. And finally, Aston Martin are still yet to confirm whether Sebastian Vettel will be back in that car after he missed the season opener of the 2022 season due to having COVID. Or of course whether Nico Hulkenberg will replace him again for this round. The team are waiting for Vettel to pass the necessary negative COVID test that he needs to to race. I'll be keeping everyone updated on Twitter about this. I've left a link to my Twitter in the description below. I also post more regularly on TikTok and I've left that link in the description below as well. Make sure you click the subscribe button below for more F1 news, analysis and opinion. If you've liked the video, click the like button below. This will really help the YouTube algorithm.